in a perfect creation, you know, before the fall, our DNA is perfect. So uh, after the Genesis 3, Adam and Eve, the, the sins of our first parents, that's how we acquired um, genetic mutation, manifested as all this nasty illness. And that's the reason why we're here. We want to empower you with wisdom, with prayer, that healing is actually possible. And uh, I love sharing testimonies because Revelation says that we overcome the enemy, Satan, the devil, by the, the words of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. You know, that's how we, we defeat him. So we never get tired of sharing um, testimonies of healing. So two weeks ago when we were a uh, North Bay church in, in the North Bay doing training, a beautiful, um, kind-hearted woman approached me and she said, remember when you guys ministered here last year? in their um, service. I remember that. That was March 19th of last year and uh, we did three services, healing services. And she said that after prayer for her son who has Crohn's disease, her son is totally healed. No more diarrhea, no more rectal bleeding, no more fatigue. Um, he can eat whatever um, he wants. It's like, praise God, you know. Crohn's disease is a kind of inflammatory bowel disease marked by inflammation of the digestive tract and um, there's no cure there's no treatment for Crohn's disease we can only control the symptoms we can only prevent the relapse but no cure but for God to do an amazing miracle to this teenager is just amazing and also I prayed for this uh, lady who was an employee of the church who has a frozen shoulder she cannot lift up the right shoulder. The range of motion was very limited. After prayer, again, um, the Lord totally um, healed her. I think um, she was scheduled to do an MRI, but it says it's healed. Now I'm going to discuss, you know, what is Crohn's disease? I know that a lot of people are struggling with it. Crohn's disease or ul ulcerative colitis are um, diseases of the intestinal tract under the umbrella called inflammatory bowel disease simply because there is an inflammation of uh, the large and the small intestines but let me contrast you know uh, what is Crohn's and how does it differ with ulcerative colitis so both of them are marked with inflammation both of them are genetics meaning to say that your development of either one of those diseases, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis is uh, higher if one of the family members, especially first degree, also suffers from it. And it could be environmental. They think that it could be diet or stress, but that's no longer true. But your diet and stress can actually aggravate the symptoms of your Crohn's disease. And what are the hallmarks of um, this inflammatory bowel disease? Both of them can manifest as diarrhea, frequent diarrhea. There could be uh, rectal bleeding in the stools and there could be abdominal pain. So the, these are the three hallmarks, diarrhea, rectal bleeding, abdominal pain. And the symptoms can range from mild, moderate, and severe. We are educating you right now, if you are one of those, to really keep an eye on your symptoms because the earlier you visit your doctor or gastroenterologist, the better for you to, to avoid um, complications. How do you differentiate Crohn's from ulcerative colitis? Like Crohn's can literally affect um, any tissue from your mouth down to the anus. So it doesn't spare any part of your digestive tract. And uh, it has the so-called um, patches or, or skip lesions, meaning to say that um, it could it could affect, like, say, the intestine and skip the ileum and then go to the to the colon. That's how it is. But the ulcerative colitis it only affects the colon and the rectum, like it's pretty much in the large intestines. In terms of the extent of the involvement, Crohn's is is worse because. It involves the entire length of the entire wall of your your intestines meaning to say this is the one that can actually perforate your intestines causing bleeding and you know one day the patient will just uh, present with fatigue and terry colored blackish stools and then uh, patient pass out also the patient in Crohn's disease might develop fistula what are these? It's like a tunnel. You develop a, a tunnel between two organs. So 
you would see like stools in your urine. It's gross, but yes, it can happen. Or, or like, like a draining wound in the skin, but it's actually coming from the bowel and you will see stools outside of your skin because of those tunneling. And uh, also, of course, again, anemia can, can happen and also blockage in your intestinal tract. Okay, uh, this happens because um, if there is an inflammation, for example, eventually there will be development of scar tissue, okay? And so eventually this scar tissue will obstruct the entire um, diameter of your intestines. That's how you develop obstruction. So pretty soon, patients will be manifesting with unrelenting vomiting. Um, they could develop a fever as well because anytime there's inflammation, remember, inflammation is marked by redness, swelling and uh, fever so those are examples so keep an eye on those symptoms and then how do you diagnose this Crohn's disease um, there are a lot of things the doctor can do like just the conventional x-ray can um, can visualize if there are any stricture or obstruction or uh, he can also do a contrast using the barium it's a chalky white uh, material that you swallow and it somehow creates a silhouette of your of your intestinal tract to really determine which one is uh, obstructed. Also, CT scan and MRI can determine the extent how severe is your Crohn's disease. Okay, um, like you have to be using uh, wisdom. Also, if you have it, be upfront and you have to do your part. Studies have already um, showed that exercise can actually help any kind of illness by uh, giving a boost on your um, immune system. Um, eating the right food. Make sure that you eat um, healthy food. On days that you are too fatigued to exercise, then um, don't do it. When to see the doctor. If you are uh, fatigued or if you see a lot of bleeding in your stool, um, if you feel like you're gonna pass out, if your diarrhea is more than six times a day, if there are signs of dehydration, go see your, your doctor for, for Crohn's disease. The doctor can prescribe you with um, aminosalicylate medication. Um, he can also prescribe you with immunomodulators. Modulators. Remember that um, Crohn's disease is a dysfunction also of the immune system. Every time there's a microorganism, fungi, virus that invades our body, the immune system will try to um, create an immune response to destroy this bacteria. But in the process, it becomes dysregulated that it attacks our own intestines and, and colon. So um, be mindful of that. With regards to ulcerative colitis, it affects only the surface of the large intestines and the rectum. We have the so-called tenesmus. It's a term that um, describes you know, that sudden or constant urge to, to move bowels or to defecate. So it's also a highlight for ulcerative colitis. Um, so in terms of the extent, I think UC is more limited compared to Crohn's um, disease. But one um, complication of UC is bowel rupture. So your large bowel can actually rupture and you know, that means your stools are all outside of your intestinal tract. It, you can form abscess or just infection there where there is pus and you develop fever and tenderness in your abdomen. So those are the complications. So you can, you can say that this is a very nasty disease and that somehow a miracle is impossible. But then again, I already shared with you that um, we have one healing. And cure does not happen with, uh, with inflammatory bowel disease. There is hope. Again, exercise, diet. Uh, the doctor can give you corticosteroid for a short term only because steroids is a lot of side effects. It can, uh, it can elevate your blood pressure. It can develop osteoporosis. It can destroy your bone. It can change your mood weight gain, a lot of complications. So we don't want to use this prolonged. Let me give you tips. If you are a healing room worker right now, listening, um, you can pray for both inflammatory bowel disease and with focusing on the intestines, you know, just asking the Lord to, to heal um, and eradicate the inflammation. 
That's number one. Um, to restore the normal anatomy of the intestines, you know, restore the mucosa. If there are any um, fistula or tunneling for the Lord to supernaturally heal those, that the Lord will restore the entire anatomy of the intestinal tract. No more blockage, no more obstruction, uh, and that uh, the normal functioning of the intestines with regards to digestion and absorption will be restored. Uh, other problems that I want to reiterate is uh, anemia. So because of chronic bleeding, one may may need uh, iron uh, supplementation. Also, um, calcium is being absorbed in the intestines, so you may develop hypocalcemia or osteopenia or osteoporosis, for example. So just uh, be mindful of these um, complications that we make sure that we supplement ourselves with all this um, supplement. So uh, let me pray right now that Lord, uh, I just pray that for our listeners, maybe their loved ones are struggling with inflammatory bowel disease. I also want to say before I, I continue praying that once you have the inflammatory bowel disease, then that also increases your risk for colon cancer. That's why we want to crush this. We want to pray this Lord that this doesn't happen because we don't want cancer. So Father, I just pray that you restore the, the integrity of the intestinal tract from the mouth to the anus, that you restore its function in uh, digesting food and absorption of minerals. I pray that um, there would be no diarrhea, no bleeding, uh, no anemia, um, the restoration of the intestinal uh, mucosa, Lord, be restored and healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that uh, the immune system be healed, that it won't attack the, our own immune system or the immune system of somebody who has Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. I pray for rest. I pray for strength because they get easily dehydrated or fatigued. Uh, I also pray for hope. There are people that's been struggling for over a decade because the onset of this disease is between 15 to 35 years old. And also, Lord, for those who have undergone surgery, Lord, I just pray that you will supernaturally um, restore the bowel uh, segment that was um, done for them. So, Lord, thank you for that strength and that hope and just joy for the journey for those who are still uh, waiting for their healing. In Jesus' name, amen.